All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, November 2nd, 2012. Um, the results of the morning, gold, were up 24 ticks. The NQ, were up 2 ticks. And the Russell, we are up 9 ticks. Um, those are the results of the morning's trades. We did trade crude. We've got a break-even there. We also traded um, the ES, and we had a break-even on the ES as well. Now, let me go through the trades. I'm, I accidentally deleted my crude chart, so I'm not going to go through crude. Um, let's start right off with the ES, okay? Because this is what we were looking at. There was a lot of stuff that we looked at today that had to do with um, with information from the partners meeting last night. Um, hopefully, all the partners that are out there right now, uh, all active partners anyway, you'll be able to get into the uh, be able to get into the members area over the weekend and watch that partners meeting if you did not watch it last night. And uh, also the um, the webinar we did the other day about the candlesticks with Steve Bigelow should be out there over the weekend as well if you want to take a look at that. Um, if you are a partner but you're inactive, um, to get in there and look in the members area, of course, you need to know you just need to become active. As simple as that. Um, if you're on the free trial and you want to become a partner, so you can go to these meetings and take part in them and watch them after if you want to. Um, check your email. You should have something in your email from me, um, an offer from me. Check that out. Take advantage of it. If you have any questions about it, give me a call. Uh, my number is in the email. Um, if you do not have an email and you want to become a partner, obviously just send us an email at support at cfrn.net. Ask for partner info, and I will send that off to you as quickly as humanly possible. Um, all right, that's it. If you have not taken a free trial and you want to, go to www.cfrn.net. That's cfrn.net forward slash apply and sign up there. All we need is your email address and your name. Okay, first and last name, please. Um, even if the last name's bogus, uh, at least the first and last name. Um, so we know how to refer to you. All right. All right. The trading this morning. In last night's meeting, we were talking about channels and how channel trading... You know, Dwayne had done a, a blog post on this a while back. It actually got posted in a couple of places, I think. Um, and and we were talking last night about um, channels, how to identify channels, how to trade when you're in a channel, things to look for with channels. And this morning, we had a channel. Um, we got short right up here on the ES on this pullback up to the BBC right here. Okay, we got short right there. Um, we ended up taking a break even on the trade for two reasons. One was the YM was right at a weekly trading zone, and the other was we were right on top of a uh, a news event. So we got out of that at break even right there. You can see obviously it went down to the bottom of the channel. Um, the channel hadn't actually been established at this point. I think the channel became established down here. Um, right, right down here is where we had finally had a channel established. Um, unfortunately, the problem is that it went sideways the rest of the morning. You know, there was another opportunity right here to short off the top of the channel, looking for it to get down to the bottom of the channel. It didn't make it all the way down. It did put in a new low. This low right here happens to be a double bottom, a multi-day double bottom. Here's the other one right there. Okay. So if we drop down below that, I think we'll see a, a significant drop. But we've got to get below that. It's been fighting this area right here for you know, for a couple hours now, it seems like. Um, we took this trade. We got a break even on it, and that was it. All right. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, become a partner, get into the live trading room, and you'll see all that stuff live. Okay, on the NQ, we had... Let's scroll back here. Um, we had a few opportunities in here in the morning on the NQ. The one that I took was right here. We were coming off a lower swing, pulled back up to a red area on the yellow line, and I sold it, and it went down here and bounced off the BBC, at which point I had moved my stop up to break even plus a couple of ticks, and I ended up getting plus a couple of ticks on it when it came back and took me out. All right. Um, this also, if you take the yellow brick road off of here, um, this was a, a long opportunity, though we didn't have a ton of divergence here. It did test the BBC after the bullish cross, test the BBC with an up close and the move up. Um, that was the one trade that we took on the NQ. Now I'm just scrolling through to the highlighted areas that I had done in the live trading room this morning. Um, right here it pulled back up and tested the BBC but we didn't have the proper divergence down here. So it went up and tested the red area right there. After coming off a lower low, that was okay to take. It didn't put in another lower low, so we weren't anticipating it was going to hold right here.
but it did give some profit right there, okay? It went up through there, came down here, put in a blue area. It didn't put in a higher high, so we were anticipating this was going to hold. Uh, it came, came back up here with some bearish divergence. It tested the BBC after the bearish cross, sent it down closed. That gave about a point. I was thinking it was going to make it down here. Um, what did I say? I think on the entry on that, 77 half. And I was looking for it to get down to 76. So it had a point and a half in it, and it went a point and a quarter. Um, not coming off a lower low right here. We weren't anticipating this was going to hold, and it didn't. Um, it did push price down one bar, at least one bar's length, but um, it didn't. It didn't end up holding overall. Okay. Um, let's see. Another one right here. This one I highlighted because there were two things going on right here. We had the bearish cross pullback and test of the BBC and a down close with the bearish divergence. And we also had the red area up here. So we had two things telling us that this short should work. Now, at this time right here, you see how choppy the NQ is? All the other markets were the same way. So I wasn't all that interested in trading at all right in here. Um, and it did work out. Okay, You can see in all this chop right here, the yellow brick road was giving some pretty good indications. Um, when you're coming off of higher highs or lower lows, the yellow brick road was giving some pretty good indications. Um, we didn't trade the NQ after that first trade that we took, where we took a couple of ticks profit because everything just got really choppy. All right, that was the NQ. I didn't trade the YM at all today, but the YM had similar channels and um, similar trades to the ES. You see this channel right here on the way down. It got down to the weekly trading zone. The YM went zone to zone today. All right, and then once it got down to this bottom zone, it just flattened right out. It was like a pancake in there. Not much going on. Okay. Um, all right, that's that. Now, over here on soybeans. I was saying this morning, I was talking with Bert this morning um, about the soybeans. And on this is a four-hour chart right here. We have a head and shoulders pattern. Here's the shoulder, here's the head, here's the other shoulder. I drop down below this level right here at 15.25 half. That right there, a drop below that should lead to a significant decline, like a 30, 30, 40 cent decline. Okay. Um, that was all that we were looking at this morning on the uh, on the soybeans. If we flip over to the four tick range, there were some opportunities, um, though we weren't all that interested in taking any this morning. Okay. Um, we were thinking bearish the whole time, so you know, right in here there was bearish divergence to test of the BBC with a down close right here. You see on the four tick range charts, all the setups are the same. Four tick range chart here, four tick range chart here, all the setups are the same. Okay, um, thinking the same thing over and over and over again. All right, now that's that one. I didn't look at the 6E much at all today, so I'm not really going to spend any time with it right now. All right, I know Mike is going to be out there waiting in the uh, in the background there for for a couple of minutes, so I want to give him an opportunity to get in here and and tell us what he thinks. Um, a couple of opportunities off the yellow brick road here. Okay, a couple of them. Um, you can see when they're coming off of lower lows, they work out pretty well, or when they're coming off of higher highs, they work out pretty well. When they're not coming off of higher highs or lower lows, then you know, that's when you you don't think that they're going to hold. You don't anticipate that they're going to hold for any length of time anyway. All right. Um, let's see. Gold. Let me show you gold. Gold had some big moves today. Um, it was really jumpy. I got gold. Let me scroll back to where I traded. I only took two trades, and I got 24 ticks. This one right, this one right here, I had shorted. It pulled back up, tested the BBC, and gave it down close with the bearish bearish divergence. And I shorted the trade, and I didn't have a target on. And the thing just dropped really, really fast, like right in here. It dropped really fast. And when I went to <laughs> I went to manage it and move my stop, and I clicked in the wrong place, and I had a dialog box pop up on me. And, <laughs> and <laughs> see, it happens to me too. And uh, and I ended up moving from like a 30, 31, 32 tick profit to a 20, I think I had a 23 tick profit is what I ended up taking on it. Um, but anyway, that was a nice move right there on gold, and there were a bunch of them today. All right. Once it started moving like that, I kind of stayed away from it. Now, it was fun to get that one. It was great to get that one under my belt, but it was jumping around really, really uh, sporadically. 
sporadically. Yeah, that works. It was jumping around quite a bit. And it pulled back up here, tested the red, and just dropped right off of that. Okay, we got a bearish cross. Um, didn't actually hit the BBC there. Gave it down, closed, got bearish divergence. Pulled right back up, through it again. Um, it gave the red here, and then it didn't put in a lower swing, so I wouldn't have trusted that one. Um, in here, it tested the BBC and gave it down close with the bearish divergence, and it moved down. Um, let's see, over here, we had a bullish cross, tested the BBC and an up close with the bullish divergence for the move up. All right, off the higher high, bounced off the blue right here, gave a couple of bars profit. Um, I did short over here once it had slowed down a little bit. We had the bearish cross, tested the BBC with the down close. I shorted right in there, and I just took one tick profit. Um, once it I don't know. I was I was being really careful with it. I only took one tick profit. I moved my stop really quick on that. Um, and you can see that worked out as well. Um, came up here off the lower low, tested the red area on the yellow brick road. That gave some profit. Um, right in here, yeah, bullish cross, pull back down, tested the BBC. I think, what was I trying to show here? That it was going to likely move from here down to the BBC and bounce off the BBC, I think is what I was trying to show with that circle. Um, either that or I was trying to show a close up above this level right here should make it go up. I'm not sure which one. But anyway, um, we had a bullish cross, tested the BBC again off the higher high, and an up close for some profit. Um, this one over here didn't do anything. You now if you took it on the down close right here, you got stopped out. All right. So you would have stopped out on that one. I didn't take that trade. I'm just scrolling through. Now we're into the break period right here. Okay. Um, we're coming off a lower low right here. You could sell this area right here. Eight ticks risk. All right. And we'll see how that works out in the next few minutes. Um, the Russell. I did take some Russell trades this morning. Um, let's see. I ended up plus nine ticks on the Russell. But I did it in three trades. Um... <laughs> I took this first one right here. We had a test of the BBC with a down close, and it went down to the MA1. I moved my stop to plus a tick. It got me out of plus a tick. Um, I was a little annoyed that it came back up and stopped me out of plus a tick, and I waited for the close down below the MA1 because everything else was headed down right here, and I figured the Russell was going to go down too. So once it closed down below the MA1, I shorted it again, and I took some profit over here. It pulled back up, tested the BBC with bearish divergence again. Gave it down close. I shorted it again. I took some profit over here. All right. Um, then it started approaching the weekly trading zone, with these black horizontal lines right here. So I did not trade it anymore after that. Um, you can see it got in and out of this weekly trading zone. It's still in there right now. It was in and out of the weekly trading zone the rest of the morning. Okay. So I didn't take any more trades over there. Um, all right. So that is it. I... Again, I ended plus 24 ticks gold, plus 2 ticks NQ, plus 9 ticks Russell. And that was the morning. All right. If anybody has any questions about any of this stuff, or if anybody's out there in active partners and you want to become active partners and get into the members area, just send us an email. We'll send you a link. You can take care of that. Um, if you're on the trial and you want to become a partner, um, again, check your email or just send us an email at uh, support at cfrn.net. Okay, and we'll get you all the information you need to become a partner. All right, that's it. Dwayne, did you want to add anything to the recording? Um, mm, have a nice weekend. All right. <laughs>